Dr. Stu. Hey, Sherry, good to see you. <laughs> so, are there any golden rules? There is some serious science behind how to make the perfect cheese on toast. Let's start with the base, the foundation, the vehicle for the cheese, the bread. Now, I don't know if you've noticed this, but when you toast brown, it never comes out quite as good as white bread. And there's good reasons for that. The brown bread contains a substance called ferulic acid. That stops this wonderful browning reaction that goes on on the top. So I prefer brown bread because I think it has more flavour mm -hmm. and I know it's got more fibre. But you're saying that for cheese on toast, white is preferable. If we're just thinking about taste and flavour, then you should go for white. And Dr Stu recommends pre-sliced. So you might think, let's go for the chunky, yeah, let's extra get the chunky stick. one. You're getting more bread in there. Yeah. But most of the flavour is coming from this browning reaction on the outside. And so medium works out to be a really good compromise. So, the next big debate. Butter or no butter? Butter. Really? Not if you're thinking about your health, but the flavours that come from that browning reaction blend very well with fat, which is why if you have a dry piece of toast, you don't get the flavour from it because you haven't got the fat there to release it. And do we need to spread it carefully? You need to get it right to the very edges because this is going to let the very edge, which isn't going to have cheese on it, have some flavour to it. And also it'll help prevent it from burning when it's under the grill. Next up, the cheese. We've got mild, medium and extra mature cheddar. So which one is the cheese of dreams? The best melting cheese is either the mild or the medium. I would have thought you'd go for the extra mature cheddar. The longer that a cheese is aged for, the proteins that hold it together, they become so tightly intertwined with one another that they can't soften quickly enough when you put it under the grill. So it's important that you have a fairly young cheese if you want it to melt well. I always slice, but Dr Stu insists on grating and careful measuring. 50 grams of cheese is the optimum amount. So, so I probably got about 200 grams. <laughs> <laughs> the accuracy doesn't stop there. Now, you would have thought you should have it really close yes. to cook it well. But the surprising thing is, is that if you double the distance, the heat only drops by a third. So at this distance, you get a nice even spread of the heat. That's a scientific 18 centimetres. You want a medium temperature, about 130 degrees C, because that's the temperature at which the browning reactions will start. Science aside, cheese on toast is a beautiful thing. Look at that. Look at that. But my slapdash approach won't win any beauty prizes. Oh, dear. Oh, dear me. <laughs> so mine is bad. Are there any condiments that you can use to really take it to another level? I like Worcester sauce. I'd say put it on at the end, and that heightens the flavour of the cheese and all the flavours that are in there. We're going to try mine first. I mean, it's not bad. I mean, it's not bad. It's cheese and it's toast. How bad can it be? Mm hmm But mm -hmm. quite hard to eat. It's like eating through a leather sole. Mm-hmm. And let's try my cheese special. Oh, it looks really mm. nice. It looks better. Really? Cheers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just the yummiest thing. It's lovely and flavourful. Mm. So I can safely say that you've taken a household staple to a new level. Giving it the science treatment. <laughs>